Hi. In this video, I'm covering the game between Maxim Vashelagrav and Amin Tabatebe from round 2 of Grand Swiss played in Riga. Uh, we'll start from this position, which is uh, the starting position of Berlin end endgame. And black was to move, and he played bishop e7, continues developing. Uh, knight c3, and now black wants to exchange pair of knights, white took, and he plays f4 here. Now bishop f5 to stop the advance of the f-pawn and also to challenge the c-pawn, but now white has a nice way of defending his c2-pawn and also pushing away the bishop from f5. He plays rook d1 check, and after king e8, he pushes g4 anyways. He neglects his c2 pawn, because if he takes on c2 now, then rook d2 happens. And after bishop g6, the bishop on g6 would be trapped by f5. So he has to go back to c8, and now in order to support his kingside pawns, he plays king g2. Now... Uh, black wants to break this pawn chain on the king side by h5, and here white plays f5. Uh, here maybe it was better just to keep the keep the pawns as they were and to play king f3 to support the g4 pawn, but instead he plays f5 here, and black makes a huge mistake. I would say decisive mistake in this game. He plays bishop e7. Uh, because after bishop e7, you'll see that uh, he lost his opportunity to, to break the pawns. He had to play g6 here to try to somehow destabilize those pawns on the king side. And. Uh, if he takes on g6, then black can simply recapture. And now the pawn on g4 is the under attack. If he takes on h5, rook takes h5. Uh, those two bishops are going to be dangerous in uh, collaboration with, uh, with the rook. And the king is also very exposed. So after g6, the best is to play rook f1. And after gf, gf, rook g8, a move like king f3 would uh, would simply lose the pawn after after bishop g3, after rook g3, and uh, he has to go to h1. And now black can play b6 with bishop b7 and c5 to somehow challenge the the king on h1. So white would have to play something like knight e4 c5, and now rook f4 to get this bishop away, and after bishop e7, king h2, and bishop e3, the position would be quite equal, and uh, but very playable for both sides. I would say it's more pleasant to be black in this case, because of the bishop pair, but white also has his chances connected to his passed pawn, his potential passed pawn, in the center. But instead, in the game, bishop e7 was played, and now king g3 happens. And now g6 doesn't make uh, much sense as before, because the g4 pawn is protected, and on every g6, white has f6 as an answer to completely shut down the king side and to transfer his knight to e4. Maybe to force the exchange of bishops with bishop e3, bishop c5. For example, if something like this happens. Uh, let's play some random move like a6. Then bishop c5 would be useful for white. And if he takes everything, now this knight would be dominating this bishop on e6. So here, uh, black takes on g4. And after hg, bishop h4 was played. Again, on g6, uh, white would just pass with f6 and play like in the game. So you'll see the idea of, uh, of white very soon. 
Bishop h4 was played and now king f3. Bishop b7 back and now bishop f4 to potentially defend uh, h2. Because rook h2 was kinda annoying threat. So he stops it by bishop f4 and now g6 happens. And white uses this moment to play rook h1 first. And white avoids the exchange by rook g8. Uh, if by any chance he took on h1, white would take. And after gf, gf, uh, black cannot capture on f5 because of... Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, rook h8 would happen first. And after bishop f8, bishop h6 would lose the bishop. And... Uh... After king d7, gf, now these pieces look very uncoordinated and uh, also f7 pawn looks uh, like a clear target in the future. So it's not, it's not good for, for black at all. Uh, after rook h1 he avoids the exchange by rook g8 and now white pushes f6. Bishop b4 trying to exchange bishop for knight. But now, white simply avoids it by knight e4, bishop e6, and now a3 is played, bishop a5, and now knight g5. White is giving up the exchange, but targeting uh, f7 pawn in the future. Bishop d5, king g3, he takes, takes, and now uh, white has an easy target on on f7, he might even push e6 at some point, because if if black takes on e6, then f7 is a fork. So rook f8 is played, rook h7, bishop b6, and now white cuts off any counterplay for black's bishop, like bishop d4, rook d8, and now e6. Black cannot capture, of course, because of rook e7 checkmate. Uh, rook d3 is played, and now king g2. Bishop e3 trying to exchange some pieces off, but now simply he plays e7, because if bishop f4, there is this checkmate on the board. So he plays rook g8, but after knight f7, black resigned. Because if uh, if he takes on f4, for example, now white has this nice variation, knight d6, and if bishop takes, f7. And after king takes on e7, promotion happens with check. And that's it. The main reason black lost this game is that uh, after f5, in this case, he didn't play g6. G6 was a crucial moment in this game. After bishop e7, it became really, really tough to to break these pawns up on the king side. After king g3, uh, black uh, black is not able to to break those pawns, and now white just improves his pieces like knight e4, bishop g5, and after g6 happened in this case, and after f6. Black is simply out of out of sp out of space, and uh, he's not able to protect his f7 pawn. Thank you for watching, and have a good day. Bye.